16 days of oxygen, 16 days of water, 19 days of food. So, oh, we're gonna, we're gonna run out of fuel, shoot! So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put it into a high polar orbit. I don't have much experience when it comes to boats and, and those kind of things. Hello, my name is Mike Gibbon and welcome to my KSP campaign. Now with a tier two vehicle assembly building and space plane hangar and soon to be tier two launch pad, I need to get myself building some better vehicles. And so we're gonna be spending some time doing that this episode, but why don't we start off with getting into mission control and taking a look at contracts. Yeah, why don't I show you this? Because this is something um, that I've been meaning to show you and it'll probably motivate because I'm just realizing now I've got a whole lot of new plane parts. I can go into the space plane hangar, build myself a better plane. And what I'm thinking about is building a rescue plane. We get these KSC Coast Guard. I, I like these. So for instance, here's the rescue some climbers um, near K2, which is actually in the mountain range that's to the uh, west of the KSC. You gotta land there, you gotta pick up a couple of Kerbals. And I would assume once you pick them up, they are now part of your crew, which is always good. But the key to the, the, that you gotta be really careful with if you're playing with Kerbal Construction Time is that the duration of the mission is only one day. So once you accept the mission, you have one day to go out there and get your Kerbals. And with Kerbal Construction Time, where it takes multiple days to build anything, um, clearly that won't do. You have to have that craft built ready ahead of time. So I'd love to build myself sort of a generic um, craft. You can see here you have to have at least three passenger seats. I'm curious if I can get away with command seats for that. Kind of build something like uh, with an open uh, cargo bay at the back with just like four cargo seats. That's the kind of thing I'm thinking about uh, because I still only have the one cockpit the one inline cockpit that's just a single crew cockpit um so if if i'm limited to just that this probably won't cut it uh but anyway that's what i'm thinking about uh but i gotta build the craft ahead of time crude orbit that's i think to get 30 days yep a lot of part testing ah uh, marketplace this is what i want to talk about yes uh, um <laughs> you may recall mm -hmm. Last episode, I, I put Val into an orbit, and uh, because I was concerned with Kerbalism and its uh, parts can fail under Kerbalism, and if her main engine failed, she would have been stuck in orbit, and with limited life support, she would have died after a few days. Uh, so I built a rescue vehicle so that if her engine failed, this rescue vehicle could go up and it could get her. And then in the comments, people were pointing out to me, uh, well, you know, because you haven't upgraded the astronaut complex, she can't EVA. So, yeah, you could get a rescue vehicle up to her, but you won't be able to um, get her into that rescue vehicle. And I don't have docking ports unlocked either. And you're like, oh, that would have been a fly in the ointment if that happened. So what I'm thinking about is a, is a secondary means of propulsion or increasing the reliability of the engine. I could do either, perhaps I could do both. And one suggestion was the use of separatrons, which I do not have yet. I don't have separatrons. But um, this, I think this is the way this works. This is a coming from the Giving Aircraft Purpose mod. Um, my understanding is that if I spend this 675 Kerb Bucks, that I will get the separatrons ahead of when I'm there. That's what I'm thinking. I'm kind of curious exactly how this works. So I'm gonna I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna take the plunge and see if this gets me some separatrons. So 675 Kerb bucks. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Curious to see if I get separatrons out of that. What else do we have under the SETI contracts? I still got to. I don't think that one counted as a contract, did it? Not entirely sure. Um, how many contracts do I have active? So yeah, that didn't even count as one of my contracts. I only have five contracts active. All right, back to the SETI ones. That's what I was going to look at. SETI contracts. I like these. I like, this is the kind of thing I would like to see uh, more of are sensible contracts that progress your space program. 
Manned orbit for 72 hours. Oh, I like that. There's one way up there for 30 days, but this one, be in orbit, no particular altitude, and be up there for 12 days. Yeah, that's 12 Kerbin days. That's right. 72 hours. I like that idea ahead of the 31. I'm going to grab that one. I like that. Anything that gets me using more Kerbals, I really like. Let's get into the space plane hangar and see what we can build. Now with the bigger Weasley jet engine, I want to build something that can not only break the sound barrier, but also has decent range of flight and perhaps can perform some of those rescues. Now again, I only have the inline cockpit available, which holds just one Kerbal. So to add some passengers, I went with four command seats. Installing them in a pair of 1.25 meter service bays using the ever versatile cubic octagonal strut. Geez, I do hope these rescue contracts are cool with this. I do have a number of better plane parts available too, including swept wings and better canards, which include the advanced canard and the standard canard, so that should really help. Now, placing these lifting surfaces in such a way as not to interfere with the service bays was a bit of a challenge. I played with changing the length of the fuselage, but ended up settling with just putting those command seats at the back of the plane rather than just behind the cockpit. I mean, this is a rescue vehicle. This ain't built for luxury. I also have now retractable landing gear and oh, wait, that reminds me. Oh, I have this seaplane contract, this contract to build something that can take off the runway, land in the water, and then take off of the water and go back to the runway. And I did attempt at building something quite some time ago that I never ended up showing you because it was an unmitigated disaster with those fixed landing gear. And then I sort of just put it on hold until I have retractable landing gear. And I still have that contract active. Well, maybe I should be doing that first rather than doing this. Yeah, I think so. I think I'm going to be getting into building a seaplane, but this thing is so close to being done. Now, why don't we test to make sure this is a working vehicle for me, and then we'll get into the seaplane. Can our Kerbals get... Let's just see if they don't look... To oh, they're in the back. There we are. Well, I can definitely lower them. Yeah, we can lower them. I don't think they look too stupid. Uh, Bill, let's get you to leave the seat and see if you can get back in. Bill is whoa. Um. <laughs> okay, well we'll work on that. But here's the question: We can climb up on there, and now here, here's the seat. Oh, board. Here we go. So we can get back in. Okay. So we can get back in. How about Jebediah? Can Jebediah get in and out? Yep. Yeah. And then get and then board. Okay. All right. So we're gonna close these. Let's see if this will break the sound barrier. I believe that contract to break the sound barrier was to get up and around twenty-five. There we go. In and around 2,500, or 2.5 kilometers for altitude. And get over, well, easily. We're killing the sound barrier, so that is not an issue. Okay, so that's not, this thing can break the sound barrier, so that makes it worthwhile right there. Well, this is only a few tweaks away from being ready to go including lowering those command seats so Bill and Bob's heads aren't sticking out the top. And I did that. I went back into the space plane hangar, uh, did those tweaks, christened this the Weasley M1, and undoubtedly you'll be seeing this plane in future episodes, but right now I think a higher priority is to getting that seaplane built. Let's start by just going over the contract requirements really quickly here. What I have to do is take off from the runway, land in the water, slow down to under 3 meters per second, 
Then start throttling up and get up to over 20 meters per second while still in the water. Take off, go back to the runway, and land. Now, I I've never <laughs> built a seaplane or a boat or anything that's designed to sort of be functional in the water uh, other than to simply splash down in the water and not sink. So my knowledge of sort of the hydrodynamic properties of curb and water and how it works I really have no idea but I do know how you know what a pontoon plane looks like so that was my first go is let's let's see if we can not build ourselves sort of a standard looking pontoon plane um, so I thought I ended up with something that I thought looked pretty decent took off without too much issue uh, landing though in the water Okay. Whoa, 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 whoa. Okay. <laughs> well, I'm not going to be taken off from this position, am I? All right, a bit of arse over tea kettle there. I think I need to lengthen the pontoons. So that began uh, some repeated trials of lengthening the pontoons and trying to land and. Uh, I'll admit it took a few trials <laughs> to get there, but eventually I ended up with the pontoons extended long enough out in front of the plane that it wouldn't flip over upon landing. Oh. We're up! <laughs> we are upright! Okay, so that worked. Engine's a tad soggy. <laughs> Maybe a bit more flotation at the back as well, but... Okay, the next step in this is seeing if we can get up to 20 meters per second and then seeing if we can not take off again. Maybe as we accelerate, we'll sort of lift out of the water. Alright, so a bit of throttle. Don't want to break anything. Okay, we're accelerating fine. 15 meters per second. Okay, we're going to need more throttle than this. I want to get to 20. Almost there. Okay, 20. 20 meters per second, okay. Uh, let's try and take off. We're going to need quite a lot more throttle in order to accomplish that. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, okay, this way. Come on, 60 meters per second. Oh! Turn it into a submarine. Ah! No, it wants to dip downwards. What is that maybe? Okay, just hang on, hang on, hang on. Revert flight. What if I put a pair of Junos? at the back end of those pontoons. Kind of bring the center of thrust down. We are skewing over. Why, why does it want to skew over? There we go. Go, 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 go. go. Don't lose it. Yes! 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 Okay, now we just need to... Oh, this thing is not too stable. <laughs> okay, slower thrust. Slowly turn around. And let's see if we can not put this down on the runway. <gasps> oh no! I think that... Okay, we're going to re-terminate that. I, it's just too wobbly. But that should be an easy fix. All I gotta do is widen the stance of the pontoons. And you will be seeing the final build for this craft later in this episode as it attempts to fulfill the seaplane mission. But right now there is actually another vehicle that I want to do some modifications to. So this is the useless Onion 1 Rescue which I've already built so I'm using the Kerbal Construction Time Editor to see if we cannot modify this into an orbiter that's going to be a little bit more useful for us. Now as this thing will now have a pilot it doesn't need the 
probe body, so we'll take that out. We'll replace that with some additional reaction wheels. But I really do hate this gap. So what we'll do is we'll see if we can clean this up a bit using a 1.25 meter service bay. Okay, that looks okay. Then we'll do that, and then we can open this up. Gotta start using these service bays. Dress this up, make it look a little better. Reaction wheels go inside. KOS processor goes inside. Stick a octo strut in there. Cubic octagonal strut. Oh wait, contracts. Uh, there. Stick that inside. These batteries can go inside. There. Two batteries. There we go. We are also going to put an antenna in here because that makes the Kerbals, I forgot about this, but it makes the Kerbals happier to have an antenna on board. We want to make our Kerbals happy, so we're going to make them happy. There we go. So let's stick in there a Communitron 8. This will give them the ability to call home, which will reduce their stress level in Kerbalism. But there is something that's more important to get to. I ended up building a rescue vehicle because I was worried that the engine might fail and then Val will be stuck, but then it was pointed out in the comments that, well, whatever, she can't EVA, so she wouldn't be able to get into the rescue vehicle anyway. Now, there are two ways I can deal with this. One is, if I take a look at the engine, there should be, there it is, the quality of it, right? So I can increase the quality and if I go to... I'm getting new engines. Why am I stuck on these engines? Okay, I, I gotta start looking at these new engines I got. There's a Valiant engine. Oh, it's a lot heavier. Okay. Okay, I'll have to think about what I can do with that. But for, anyway. There's my torch. Where's the reliability stats? Where did I read that before? Engine reliability. So if you turn it to high, so on standard, mean time to failure, I would assume this means, so on average, almost eight years. And if you put it up to high quality, all almost that, and that's just a bit more mass. So that's one way to deal with it. I don't think my risk of engine failures is high as I like to think it is. The other option, too, is just to give an alternate means of propulsion, and that is why I got separatrons now. I can put separatrons on this thing. Of course, that's going to add. Oh, yeah, but that's adding into the VA. Uh, the the where where are my separatrons? Let's take those out of the mix. Way up here. That has now. Oh, I took out a lot of the solid fuel. Let's really, you know, this has added a lot of mass. Of course, a simple solution to all of this is simply to construct an R4 booster, isn't it? good. Alright. And now we have Delta V up the wazoo. Let's let's pimp this thing. Turn on the truss structure and the interstage nodes. Nice. Okay, what else can I pimp out? Oh, I can put some freaking science on it, right? I got goo. Goo, 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 goo. 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 Now there's an inline goo. Just oh, that looks awesome. Open that. Yep. That's one slot. So we can go up and do an experiment. That's good. Now. Now that I got so much delta V, what oh I'm way over my t my mass limit, but that's okay. In about five days my upgraded launch pad will be done. Might not let me test it though. Let's take a look at this. 
because they got the contract to be up for 72 hours, 12 days. Right now we have food for two and a half days. Now we can step this all up. But I'm going to need some extra. I still have no humidity control, so hopefully that's okay. Now we have life support for five days. We're going to need solar. For show. I think that looks awesome. And then the goo can still do its thing, open up and look good, right? Oh yeah, it slides that way. That's awesome. Okay, so goo can still be exposed easily enough. What we need, though, are resources to keep them alive for 12 days. A small container containing food and water. Okay, I think I can probably... Let's remove this. this. Now I have, oh my gosh, a small container, 150 days worth of food. Okay, so we can definitely remove a lot of this. Oxygen, and I do have a small oxygen tank right there. Looks all right. Oxygen is now 32 days of oxygen. 16 days of oxygen. 16 days of oxygen. 16 days of oxygen. 16 days of water. 19 days of water. 19 days of food. This is a much better onion one. Should be able to keep somebody up there for a while. Fortunately, it's going to take about eight days for all these modifications to be completed. So we're not going to be seeing this until next episode. But in the meantime, let's get into our building queue and figure out what we do have coming up. Okay, so I got that VTOL, but I can't roll it out because I'm still waiting on the launch pad. I got an ugly test vehicle. Oh, they're going to be piling up. <laughs> but I do believe the launch pad is coming up right after that. Dun, dun, uh, two, one, woohoo, new launch pad, all right, um, we got a ton of stuff, who are we going to do first, let's roll out the VTOL, I want to talk about that, now nah, let's do the, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll do this, it'll be quick, 36 minutes to roll that out, oh, oh, oh that was a mistake, Roll out ugly test vehicle. I don't even remember exactly what it is. All right, what do we got here? This is... I have no idea what I'm doing. Oh, wait, no, this is a Holly. Okay, 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 I see it. I see a thud engine on here. So this is to get into an orbit of at least 150 kilometers. Altitude of just don't, between 150 and 100 be in orbit and have the thud. So I don't, I just have to haul it. So, um, do I have a KOS chip? I do not have a KOS chip on here. I do not. So we shall be flying this all manually. Manually. Okay, ready? Five, four, three, two ish, one ish. Off. We are going manually. You just have to watch your apple lapses here and just, you know, if it starts to increase, pitch down a bit. If it starts to decrease, pitch up a bit. You can do this pretty good just from this view, even though you don't know exactly how far away that apple lapses is. Close. And cut. There we go. So, contract complete. It's that, spin around, and deorbit. Okay, we have to recondition the launch pad. Takes about an hour. And then we're ready for the VTOL. Didn't have too much of a backup. Actually, I should have done the VTOL first, because I'm sure the reconditioning of the launch pad of this will be a lot less. So we just got to get up to an altitude of 500 meters, and then come back down and land safely. And Jebediah is going to do that for us. Now, what we have, though, and if you've been watched my most recent um, Sandbox Saturday, I have an Ascent script 
that actually this is a more so we're gonna go as a copy path and it is called hover AG it's hover with action groups and I'm not gonna show it to you because actually I'm a little bit out of sync in my playing times but actually the, the development I last Saturday I developed a hover script and next Saturday I'm going to hover do a hover script with action groups so I'm not gonna show you the code <laughs> But, if I run hover ag, oh, I have to turn on my engines before I do anything. That always produces an error. There we go. So I get a little bit of a window here, and it tells you my controls. Action group number 9 puts us into hover mode. Action group number 10 kills the throttle. Action group number 6 increases the throttle 5%. Action group number five decreases the throttle 5%, and action group one ends the program. And uh, yeah, so right now our throttle is killed, so we just need to go up 500 meters and then come back down. So, what do you think, Jebediah? Are you up for this? Jeb's like, yeah, 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 let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. Absolutely, let's go. Okay, so we are going to first go, I got a nine, and then increase throttle is a six. So, nine is hover mode and six that should get us going up nice and slowly let's go back down to there actually six again we want to go straight up and we're going to try and go back down onto the launch pad too. I want to do as best job as I can just going straight up a little bit. Just need to increase the throttle even more. We're almost at 500 meters. Okay, decrease the throttle a lot. We're going to wait for our vertical velocity to come but even more. Come on, decrease throttle. Should have just killed the throttle. Like a lot of up upness here. Just kill it. Kill the throttle. There we go. Hover. Whoa! That's interesting. Hover is more than hover. <laughs> okay, why? It seems to be overcompensating. Alright. Script is not working as well. See, if I hit hover, it shouldn't be accelerating upwards, but you can see that it is. That's interesting. We're just going to go down. I'm not going down, though. Whoa, 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 whoa. Well, let's try and put it back down on the runway, huh? weird I did all this testing you'll see it next Saturday it seemed to work fine and now all of a sudden it's not we're still going down but oh, it's just... oh we're gonna we're gonna run out of fuel shoot oh no oh my gosh spent too much time farting about okay sick we're gonna get down to here okay and nine try and do a suicide burn and zero Nine. We're out of fuel. Come on, Jeb, say. Okay, Jebediah lived. That went. Oh, that was really close. All right, I was so cocky. <laughs> I spent so much time, I forgot I had limited fuel. Jebediah is okay. That's what's important. The contract, though, was a fail. All right, well, back to the Space Center. What's coming up next? The Octosite Experiment. Okay, let's do that. Oh, yeah, we'll go for the... It's like going to be a sunset launch. We'll do that. Actually, the fact that it's going into a polar orbit... Um, actually, is uh, going to help 
launching at either sunrise or sunset. Alright, so here we have the Octo-4 Sight Experiment. I thought I'd actually put into the title what it's going to do. And this has got no contracts. This is purely for science. So it's uh, the Sight Experiment is uh, a biome-specific experiment when you are in high space. So what we're going to do is we're going to put it into a high polar orbit. Whenever I do my polar orbits, I always seem to like to go to the north. I don't know why, because it kind of makes more sense, because there's ocean down there to drop your boosters in. I'm going to actually go to the south. You can see it's going just a little bit west of south to try and pull that prograde vector uh, from the east. So hopefully, once we hit our target apoapsis, we'll be going due south. But see what I mean? As we go this way, plenty of ocean for our boosters to fall into. But if we go towards the north... Uh, your boosters are gonna land I don't know I always imagine there's people's houses over here <laughs> we're dropping them on people's houses how's our apoapsis doing 175 200 and done excellent attitude lock disengaged program ended we'll put SAS on we can now lose the fairing there we go. And what did our final, our inclination, look at that, 89.7, nice job, Ascent script. Okay, we are in an orbit here. Let's orient ourselves for nice exposure for the solar panels. There we go. That should be good. And I now have action groups, so we will extend our antenna by pressing one on the action groups. I'm not 100% sure why I do have action groups. I probably shouldn't, but I don't know. Unless something's changed in KSP to give us some action groups earlier. Okay, and you can see we are collecting space low now. We are unlikely to get all of this because it takes an hour to collect each bit of science, but the science is pretty, I mean, I'm gonna look in here for the site experiment. Four and a half science? That's not that exciting, is it? <laughs> Maybe it's more than that. I don't know, I would've thought that was more science. What's in here? Doesn't tell me how much. Okay, but we are collecting low science nonetheless. Uh, let's get up towards our apoapsis. So what we're going to do, we're just going to just bring here, we're get a little bit closer here. I just want to get barely just an orbit. That's all I'm, I'm shooting for. So we're just going to bring our, whoops, it's not quite in orbit yet. Everything's upside downy. All right, that's good. Let's orient again for the solar. Now it feels a little bit more natural now that I have it in the orbital camera. Okay, we'll turn off the SAS, it's not necessary. And we're starting to collect all kinds of high science, but I know for a fact, because it takes an hour, I think, to collect the science over any particular biome. So I know for a fact, um, I did not get all the space low, so that's why I left my periapsis the way it was, so that we will take a look at my path here. We will dip back down nice and low, collect some low and I'll keep uh, low science, and then I'll keep an eye out on the VAB. And once I have all the low science, I'll come back out here, put it in a high orbit all the way around, and that should be good for me. That should be collecting some science for a while. Seaplane. Excellent. Val's ready, just in time to do the seaplane. All right, Valentina, you're gonna fly our seaplane. All right, so here we have our seaplane. Uh, took quite a bit <laughs> to get this, 
get this to work. I, I, I've never, I don't have much experience when it comes to boats and, and those kind of things. So here's our contract, fly a seaplane. Let's bring it over here by itself. Okay, so we gotta take off, we gotta land, it's basically take off, land in the water, get going to at least 20 meters per second in the water, then get airborne, and then come back and land back on the runway, or uh, what, you can go to the whatever space plane hangar. So there we are. Okay, so SAS on. Brakes are on. Uh, throttle up. And put the view on chase for a plane. So we don't have to get to any particular speed or anything like that. Um, we simply have to put it safely down into the water. We can take, I don't know, a quick look at it. Oh, we're starting to go on. We just fly and we'll take it. We'll talk about it as we go. Uh, so punch it. Here we are. It is pitched up a bit on the runway, so it actually takes off pretty easily. There we go. Off we go. All right, we track the landing gear, and that landing gear is designed to just disappear in there because friction is absolutely an issue <laughs> when it comes to putting stuff in the water. I, I, I really think that um, Kerbin has some pretty sticky water. <laughs> Alright. We're not getting ambitious. We're going to simply go straight just land just off the shore here. No reason to get silly. adapt this into sort of a rescue vehicle if it becomes necessary. Slow down a little bit. I want to be going pretty slow when we touch down in the water. That's pretty good. Okay, vertical speed is nicely under control and Okay, we are down, so SAS off. I want this thing to settle down because if it's tilting one way or the other, you get more friction on one side than the other, and then uh, and then this thing wants to turn, which is not good. Okay, we have now slowed down to less than three meters per second, so SAS on, throttle up. Now the job is to get to over 20 meters per second while still in the water. That's going to be trivial. There we go. And start pitching up. Get us out of this. There we go. All right. We are now airborne again. Time to go back to the runway. Nothing fancy. Okay. All that's left is the land and come to a stop. Gear down would be a good plan. Can you can't break anything on the plane too? Fast enough. These engines on the backs of the pontoons really, I think, was one of the things that really made this thing work. Alright, coming down. I really had issues with this. There we go. <laughs> Wanting to tilt over. We're, we're there, right? We're there. There it is. All right. Green. Okay. We shall actually recover this because I might modify this. 
turn it into something that uh, we're going to recover this straight into the space plane hangar and this might end up going through some adaptations in the future let's go take a look at contracts it's another contract out of the way Colonel Franlo Kerman Bring them to yeah, the rescue station safe for recovery. Oh, it expires in two days. I won't have stuff built by then, so is it possible to see exactly where he is? Like where if I go into the tracking station. Oh, it's so he's just oh he is in the water. Look at that. So he is in the water. Okay. That gives me good reason to want to modify my plane, doesn't it? And we're going to say so. This is going to take six and a half days still to do. So, and it's still got to. I still got to build the other, the Weasley Mark One. So that won't be in time for that contract. But I think those contracts keep cycling around. But I'm going to rename this and say this needs testing. <laughs> I don't want anybody flying it until it's tested. And actually, for quite frankly, I never did test either the Orion. That also needs testing. To be quite frank, this is of course now the Orion 2 as well, isn't it? So we'll save that as the Orion 2. And actually, that's what's going to be coming up next. But you know, I think that's going to have to be for next episode. So, in the meantime, I thank you for watching and hope to see you again next time.